Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to actually build your model. So if you have moved your cube somewhere else, um, it's a good idea to just have it centered. So with my cube selected, I'll just go back to this mode. Over here in this panel, I can just um, set the location to zero like this. Uh, if you deleted your cube, let's see, if you deleted your cube, you can add a new one to the scene by clicking add mesh cube up here. You can see there's a lot of other kinds of primitive shapes that we could add depending on what shape uh, kind of form we want to build. Um, the cube is generally a pretty good place to start. And again, I want this to be centered. <clears throat> And now to start modeling, um, I need to change to a different uh, layout. So there's, or not layout, but different sort of set of windows. So up at the top here, there's all these different tabs for different um, kind of tasks that you might want to do. And they're just different uh, workspace layouts. So this is one for laying out a, a scene. Um, and then the next one over is modeling. <clears throat> so in the modeling view, I can, instead of just selecting um, the entire object, I can select the individual vertices of my cube, like this. I can select multiple objects by uh, holding shift and clicking. So now I've selected this entire face. If I want, there's an easier, oops. Uh, yeah, okay. If I want to select this whole face, um, I can actually switch from vertex select mode up here, that's what that means, to face select. And if I do that, now when I click on these faces, it selects the whole face automatically. There's also edge select, which is this little line here. And so now I can select edges if I want to. You can see they turn orange when I select them. Um, okay, <clears throat> all of the same commands that we had in uh, our layout or object mode uh, are the same. So I've selected this, these vertices that make up this top face here. I can press the G key to grab and move them. I can use this to grab and move them as well, and it'll position this gizmo. It's sort of at the center of my selection. Uh, I can press the, oops, I keep doing this because they changed this. Okay, I can use this tool to rotate it. Oops, if I'm careful, I can rotate it around the Z axis like that. I can also press the R key to rotate it, R and Z to rotate around the Z axis, or R and Y to rotate around the Y axis, etc. And I have a scaling tool. So I can use this to scale things, or I can press the S key to scale. And the uh, S key also has the same kind of constraints. So I can press S and then X to scale on the X axis, and S and then Y to scale on the Y, or I could do S and then Shift Z to uh, scale on the Z plane, I guess. And you can see as I'm working, um, this little bar on the bottom is changing to show me different things I can do. So if I press the S key, now you can see it's changed to show me all those different shortcuts I could, I could use. Pretty handy. Uh, okay, and then this gives us all of our same options as before. So uh, we also have a bunch of new um, tools at our disposal that'll be really useful for modeling. Um, so I'm gonna skip annotate and measure again. And the next tool that's really super useful, this is like one of the main tools you use when you're modeling is extrude. So what this does is it lets me pull out new lengths of uh, 3D model of geometry. And you can see it's added new edges and new vertices along the way. So this is how I would start to build out a shape like a know, a human <laughs> or whatever. 
there's, uh, I also can just press the E key to extrude, which is what I normally do. And if I don't have this extrude tool turned on, I can still just do that. So I don't have that goofy, um, this thing. I can select multiple faces and extrude them too. Oops. Let's see here. So I can click that and then that with the shift key. So click, shift, click, and then E to extrude. <clears throat> Uh, I can do this one, which is called inset faces, which is kind of similar to extrude, but it um, pulls inward. So it creates geometry that's pulled inward, and then I could extrude out like that. So now I have this little lip right here. There's also bevel, which is similar kind of thing. It creates a beveled edge around my selection. So I could select um, this entire, oops. Uh, so it's the, the reason this keeps happening is um, you press the A key to select all. It used to be that you would then press the A key to deselect all, but instead they changed it in this version to Alt A, and I'm just not quite used to that yet. So A key to select all, Alt A to deselect all. Um, but so I can select this whole top of this and then use the bevel key, uh, the bevel tool. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. And so it's adding beveled edges. If I wanted to not have all this extra geometry on the inside like that, I could instead just select um, this outer edge, I think. Yeah, this will work. And then use the bevel tool. You can see it's creating a nice beveled edge there without any extra geometry on this top face. And often with these tools, there's extra features available to you. If you see down here, this shows me the last command that I used. So it says bevel. And if I open that up, I can change the number of segments in this beveled edge. And I can change the profile or the slope. So you can see as I move it, Towards negative one, it becomes kind of concave, and as I move it towards one, it becomes convex. So, yeah. And then you can also adjust the width here as well. So a lot of a lot of these tools have something like this. Uh, and you can see here it's messing that up. So you want to be careful about things like that. Um. Another useful tool, let's say you're modeling something like a arm, you pull extruded out some segments and you want to add more detail to this. Uh, you want to add more of these edge loops is what this is called, this loop of edges. I believe I can, yeah, okay. Oh God. <laughs> so this tool is called loop cut and it basically lets me just add another loop of edges um, anywhere where it can detect a ring of faces. So I can just select where I want to do it um, and then you click and then it places an edge loop there. Uh, I could increase the number of these cuts too and you can see it spaces them evenly. Uh, and I think this changed a little bit too, but if I click and then drag, I can actually slide it between the other two edges to position it where I want it. So to, uh, and then I can like scale this in a little bit if I wanted. Oof, gosh. Um, and I'll start, go back to the selection mode. If I wanted to scale this whole edge loop, I could select the entire edge loop by holding Alt Shift and then clicking on it. And that selects all the edges all the way around. And then I can scale it down or up or whatever I want. Uh, let's see, there's the knife tool, which lets you cut new, uh, new edges into your shape. This is a way to add geometry as well. So now I, uh, have basically have changed my shape to have a bunch of extra edges in it and even an extra vertex here. So that can be useful sometimes, but it's really easy with this tool to create what are called n-gons. So, uh, in 3D modeling, we usually want everything to be either triangles or rectangles, and most often we want them to be rectangles. But this shape here is uh, five-sided, so uh, n-gon just kind of refers to any polygon that's more than four-sided, and it's a little unpredictable. 
So it doesn't quite know how to turn these five points into a single plane. So it's kind of guessing at how to divide it up. Um, and we don't necessarily want that. Plus it's harder to work with. But some, sometimes in a pinch that knife tool comes in handy. Um, there's all these other tools, but maybe... Uh, is this subdivide in here? I don't see subdivide anymore. Okay, well, oh, there's other cool features like shrink, fatten, edge slide. So I could grab this edge and just slide it. That's this one here. This uh, smooth one isn't going to do very much because this is a very blocky model. But um, yeah, and I'm trying to find uh, subdivide and I'm not seeing it here. But um, if you ever are looking for something and can't find it, um, you can press the F3 button to open this search bar, and then I'll search for subdivide. Uh, and there's my the option I want. So I didn't have anything selected, so it didn't do it. But if I select my whole mesh with the A key, then I press F3 and search for subdivide, you'll see that it's going to cut up every single face of this. Um, in, so every uh, rectangular face will become four rectangular faces. So I'll click that. And it just subdivided every mesh. With these options here, I can increase the smoothness, and I can increase the number of cuts. So now we're getting kind of a smoother shape. You don't want to go overboard with um, subdividing your mesh this way. Um, in order to create a smooth looking mesh, uh, we don't want to just keep adding polygons. It's actually possible instead to um, change the way it renders these faces so they're not so quite so faceted. So I'll hit um, F3 again and then select smooth, uh, shade smooth. There it is. Um, but I actually have to have everything selected. So select everything, F3, and then shade smooth. And now you can see um, those edges, those faces aren't quite so uh, harshly defined. So that's kind of step one of modeling is you want to create a basic form uh, by actually moving polygons around, extruding things, and doing what you have to do. You can see that the uh, more densely packed edge loops and geometry are, the more detail I'm able to have. This looks like a much sharper kind of crease in here because there's a lot more uh, geometry here than out here. Uh, yeah, that'll do it for this video.